Income Tax 2020 Tax Software Example Adjustments to Income IRA Deduction Come in, relax with Income Tax 2020 here we are in our Lacert tax software. You don't need the Lacert tax software in order to follow along, although I do believe they have a free 30-day trial. So if you can get access to the software, it might be a useful tool to practice with. We will be concentrating on the Form 1040 and the related Schedule 1, jumping back and forth from the data input to the Form 1040 to practice different scenarios. The software making that easier and faster to do. So we have our starting scenario being the single filer, Eric Smith, living in 90210 Beverly Hills. We've got the uh, wages at the 100,000 W-2 wages to be starting off with, simply the standard deduction at the 12,400 to get us down to the taxable income, 87,600. If we mirror that in our accounting equation in the Excel worksheet, we have the 100,000 income standard deduction 12,400 that brings us to the 87,600. Now, first thing we can we can note here is if I go up top and say, okay, what if uh, we had a W-2 income and they had a 401k plan, right? If they had a 401k plan, let's imagine that they had a 401k plan for and they had 95,000 of wages and they took that other 5,000 and they put it into let's, let's well let's, they put it into a 401k plan then within the data input we would put that 5,000 down here 5,000 and that would all be done from the actual w2 the box one would be reduced by that 5,000 as we've seen in a prior presentation and it would be basically taken care of and then we can jump back over here and that 5,000 of course already being removed from line one so we don't need any deduction there they got the advantage of the 401k plan the money that they put into it because the employer already took care of it took the money out of the box one on the wages for the w-2 and therefore we don't need any any deduction for that type of retirement plan now what if we have a situation where they don't ha have the uh the retirement plan here so they don't have access to the retirement plan let's made they let's say they made a 100,000 now we don't have any retirement plan so we have no retirement plan here so i uncheck that and i should have checked it last time but i'm going to uncheck that now so no retirement plan and so then we're going to say well what are our other options we would like to still put money into a retirement plan so that we can get basically a deduction i can't take it out of line one now but the government is basically saying well we're going to give you this option for the adjustment to income which is going to be on schedule one we're down here on the adjustments to income Typically, we're considering then the IRA deduction, the IRA deduction on 19. Now, the IRA deduction is a little bit more limited than, than you could have if you put money into like a 401k plan or something like that. You could typically put more money in, but you might get a benefit here. Now, if you had a Schedule C, then you could start thinking about some other type of retirement plan you could set up related to your business, a Schedule C type of business, like a SEP or a Simple. So then if I jump into the IRA, I'm going to say, let's jump to the IRA. Let's jump on over here. And I'm going to say that uh, we have here. Now, if I put that same 5,000 there, I'm going to jump back on over and say, now we have the 5,000 that's included in the IRA. If I go back up then to the 1040, there it is on line uh, 10A. And so that brings our taxable income or our adjusted gross income to the 95. So once again, we're at the 95, not by taking it out of box one with the use of the W-2, but rather by having this adjustment uh, for adjusted gross income. And that gives us to, to the AGI of the 95,000 there. So a couple things to note with this. One is you might be asking, well, what? how do I know if they put money into an IRA? And the only way is to basically ask them. So this is one of those types of things where you're going to be saying all the time, first, did you put money into an IRA? And then second, if you didn't, after you put the data into the tax return, you might then suggest, based on the information that the tax return gives you, oftentimes, for, for example, LACERT will give diagnostics and possibly analysis if you have access to them that will basically tell you uh, how much could have been benefited from a contribution and how much could be con contributed. And that's really valuable information because you can actually provide tax planning even up until the point that the tax return is being uh, prepared. Software can also help you to kind of know what the maximum contribution is oftentimes by putting the maximum contribution uh, into the data input. So we know that the maximum contribution typically is going to be 6,000 unless they're over the age of seven of uh, 50, I believe it was. And then they could put uh, they could put 7,000 in at the max. 
But notice the software here has number one, which says maximum contribution. And that can help you to just be like, okay, I'm not even going to look at the diagnostic. If I just want to test it out, I could just say put a one there. And that'll basically give us the maximum contribution based on the information that's currently in the tax return. That, of course, being the $6,000. Now, let's say they're over 50 and let's just see what that'll change to. I'm going to say, okay, let's go to the data input and go to my tax, uh, my individual here. And let's change this down here to 19, let's say 68. And then in the IRA, I still have the one that should adjust or calculate the maximum. And so that's going to bring us up to then 7,000, right? So now they're at the 7,000 because we told them to do the maximum and they are now over uh, 50. And if I, if I jump to the, oh, I can't jump from there. If I go to the schedule one here and we jump to the data input, right click and jump to the data input we still have the maximum of that one for the contribution okay so now let's look at the phase outs let's say well what if they already put some money in or what if they have access to like a 401k plan and they're single so let's go back on over well we're basically looking and mirroring this table here so i'm going to go back on over and say all right well what if like if i go back to the client data and we say that this person is going to be let's bring it back so they're back to like 70 seven let's say and then i go back to their wages and let's say now they have access to a retirement plan and let's say they put money into the retirement plan so i'm going to say they got access to the retirement plan and they put you know let's say uh, uh ten thousand in a retirement plan you have a you have a higher limit of the retirement plan how much you could put in there by the way and then i can usually dimp typically so that's the benefit of a 401k plan so if i then go over to the forms now it says you can't put anything into the into the ira why because they're over if we look at our table here they're going to be over the uh, seventy five thousand. can't put anything in what if i didn't even contribute what if i didn't even contribute any money into the 401k like i have access to it but i didn't put any money into it here so if i remove that and say i didn't even i didn't even put anything into it and i'm going to go back on over and say still nothing there right because they have access to it and that's going to be the point so you want to make sure if they have access to a 401k plan and that'll be checked off on the w-2 there'll be a check box that says you have access you have a 401k plan available then they want to take advantage of the 401k plan and it's typically better because you could typically put more money into it although you're often restricted you can't do tax planning basically by the end of the year you got to put it in there by december typically whereas if you're going to put money into an ira and have the ability to do so then you can typically, uh, you might have up until the day that you file the return or the due date of the tax return, not including extensions, April 15th, in other words. So now let's say the income was below 65,000 and you still have access. We're gonna say, all right, well, what if it was like, let's say we made 60,000 here, and then I'm gonna go back on over and say, all right, well, then you get to put the full 6,000 back in because you're below the threshold, even though you have access to another retirement plan through your work. And then, of course, if you're somewhere in between, this is where the kind of uh, muddy area is, 65 to 75. So let's say we say 68,000, 68,000, and then go on back over and say, all right, what is that going to do? 68,000. So now it phases out. Now you can look at the worksheet to see what the phase out is, but you basically want to know, you know, the general rules, you know, if you, if you have access to the retirement plan, then it's going to phase out over a certain threshold singles around that 65. And then if you're, if, and so it's going to start phasing out at that point, you might know the end phase out time period, 75,000, uh, if you're, if you're single, and then it's going to go, it's basically going to go away. But that's going to be where the software is going to be useful because then again, you might not know that phase out or what the phase out is going to be. You're probably not going to calculate it without the software. And then you can see, okay, you could still put money into an IRA and most software will give you kind of like a, a double check on that. The diagnostics for Lacert will or an analysis will tell you, hey, they could have benefited by putting another 4,200 into uh, an IRA. So that's going to be a useful tool. Now, let's say, what if they were married? Let's go over to the married here and say, now we're going to say that they are married. So we're going to say they're married. We got married filing jointly. Eric Smith got married again. And then, so there it is. And so now, if I go back on over to the forms, uh, we're going to say we have the max. If I go to schedule one, is still... Uh, maxed out at that uh, 6,000. So there's the max. We're at the 6,000 because now the threshold 
even though he has access to a, a retirement plan, the threshold now for married, if there's less than 104,000, they could still contribute. Now, notice we have two spouses now. What about the other spouse? If I hit the jump to and say, what about spouse number two here? Spouse number two. And so then I go back on over to the forms. And so now we're at the 12,000. So typically, you know, you have two individuals now. Uh, they could, if they didn't have access, if they had some income and they didn't have access to the 401, to the, um, to a 401k or retirement plan can both put in 6,000, which of course would add up to the 12,000. And then, and you might have two W-2s there that you'd have to basically make indications on, of course. So you might say this might be employer one, and then you might have another employer, employer number two. And, and this might be the spouse. And again, they might have access to the retirement plan. And so we might say, well, what if the employer one, this was 100,000. And then number two, we had, if we go over the 4,000, if this was uh, 40,000, so now they're at 140,000. If I go back on over, they, they both had access to the retirement plan. So now nothing can be included. So if I go back to page one, and that's because they're over the 124,000. So then if we put them somewhere in the middle, 104 to 124, we're going to say, okay, 104 to 124. And we put them in the middle. Let's make this 20,000, uh, 104 to 124. Let's go back on over. So now we get a partial sum of it. Now, the, the thing that gets a little bit tricky is you might have one, one of the individuals are subject to a uh, retirement plan and the other may not be. So what if, what if basically this spouse has a retirement plan and this spouse doesn't remove the retirement plan here and go on back over. And now we're at the 7,200. So basically one spouse is getting the 600. The other is, is getting reduced ability to, to put into the, into the retirement plan. You can see the calculation over here. So the, t the calculation you can, you can check out in more detail, but again, these are the kind of the scenarios where the tax software is useful to give you that breakout to be able to say, okay, this is how much each spouse can basically put in based on these types of circumstances. If we bring the income back up again, let's say the spouse doesn't have access, but she's also makes uh, 100,000. So now they're at 200,000. This one doesn't have access to the retirement plan. So if they were single, then if she was single or this spouse was single, then you would think they would be able to put in the 6,000 into the retirement plan. But because the other spouse has access to the retirement plan here, an, a 401k or something like that, then they're going to be limited. The second spouse will be limited. So we're going to be under the 6,000. Now we're at that 3,600. So again, you could take a look at the worksheet to see what that phase out looks like. But note that uh, you're probably not going to be doing the calculation possibly in your head, most likely if you're talking to a client or something like that. So if they're in this situation, they're saying, well, one spouse has a retirement plan, the other doesn't, my income's over the threshold where that could make a, make a difference, then you're, you're probably thinking, okay, let's get in, let's get in, let's do the taxes before you know, the due date so that we can consider whether or not you would be able to put more money into, say, a, a, an IRA if necessary. So if we brought this all the way up to uh, 250,000. Let's just take a look at the phase out here. Now we've basically, we've removed it entirely at this point. And again, that's even though the second spouse didn't have access to, to the retirement plan. So again, the general rules would basically be, uh, if you, if, if someone has a 401k plan, then you want them to, to put money into the 401k plan is the best way to do it. I would max out as much cash flow as you can. That would give you a benefit to put the money into the 401k plan. If they don't have access to the 401k plan, then you think about the IRA or possibly suggest if they have a business to set up like a SEP or a simple for the business to have an, a higher amount they could be put into that. Uh, and then if, if they are, if they have some money that was put into a 401k plan, then you want to have a general idea of what the threshold would be, right? So if you're single and you make less than 65,000, you can still put money into, into an IRA. You might not have the money to do that, but you, could do that if you're less if you're married and you're less than 104,000 you could still typically put money if you have more than that then it gets a little bit muddy in terms of how much you might be able to deduct because there could be phase outs that will be involved even if your spouse is the one that basically has access to the to the IRA there could be phase outs so in that case just be aware that you may still be able to put money into an IRA 
and then let's do the tax return. Let's make sure that we can we we see what can get a benefit by putting it into an IRA, and then possibly put that into do the last minute tax planning of doing that before uh, the due date of the return, April fifteenth. Uh, 